Good evening from New York. I'm Lawrence O'Donnell. When asked about President Obama's reaction when he learned about the glut of secret American diplomatic messages about to be published by WikiLeaks, here's how Robert Gibbs diplomatically responded. The president uh, uh, was, uh, as an understatement, not pleased uh, with, uh, with this uh, information becoming public. The Obama administration spent the day reeling from the revelations from WikiLeaks, the organization started by an Australian web hacker devoted to revealing secret documents. The State Department's legal advisor has already warned the site that publishing the cables could endanger lives and undermine international cooperation against nuclear proliferation and terrorism. The documents include details of U.S. attempts to remove nuclear fuel from a Pakistani reactor, that Saudi Arabia and other Gulf nations urge the U.S. to attack Iran's nuclear program, and that China is distancing itself from North Korea and may be willing to accept a unified Korean peninsula. There are cables that show that the U.S. Secretary of State asked American diplomats to spy on other ambassadors. There are embarrassing statements about foreign leaders. One diplomat refers to French President Nicolas Sarkozy as a naked king, and a story of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and companionship from his senior Ukrainian nurse, described as a voluptuous blonde. The White House is trying to deal with all of these revealing documents all at once. So what is it like to be in the Oval Office during a diplomatic crisis like this? For the answer to that, we turn to the last words, senior White House correspondent, Author of White House Diary, the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. President Carter, thank you for joining us tonight. I want to start uh, with the WikiLeaks uh, crisis, if it is that, uh, for the president. If you were president right now, how would you handle this kind of diplomatic crisis? Well, I, I read the White House statement, and they expressed some very uh, understandable concerns about the um, conversations that take place back and forth, not only in person around the room, but also in emails and dispatches that are very frivolous on occasion as people let their hair down, not ever realizing or believing that what they say verbatim is going to be exposed. So I would be concerned about it, and uh, I think I would just tell my people to uh, explain the final results of these controversial discussions and not just... Uh, to pick out the titillating and sometimes embarrassing segments from it. I mean, do, do you get the feeling that people are putting too much in writing at this point, uh, talking about uh, Gaddafi's possible mistress and that sort of thing? <laughs> I mean, uh, how is that necessary in these kinds of communications? Well, I think they've always been that way. You know, ambassadors, when they uh, want to uh, attract attention to themselves or make sure the Secretary of State knows who they are and where they are, quite often they put some titillating uh, expressions in the dispatches to be just to attract attention to themselves. But I think that the thing that has happened this time is that uh, no one dreamed that they would ever be revealed. I don't know that anything serious has happened that would be damaging to uh, America's policies around the world and, and so forth. But I think the earlier WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks uh, leaks, you might say, uh, did possibly expose some of America's friends in Iraq and Afghanistan to possible retaliation after it was known uh, that they were supporting us some, sometimes without uh, the Taliban knowing who they were. What about how it exposes uh, the leadership in Saudi Arabia, that, that apparently they are in favor of the United States taking any kind of action it wants to against Iran in terms of uh, squelching their, their, their march toward nuclear power? My guess is that the Iranians were not surprised by knowing that basic fact that King Abdullah and the uh, Saudis were very deeply concerned about Iran's new ascendancy in, uh, I would say, in influence after the Iraq war. But I think uh, for the king to refer to Iran as a snake, for instance, might not be something that the Saudi Arabians wanted to be promulgated. And it might create some additional tension between the two. And what about Secretary Clinton today said that these documents, quote, tear at the fabric of responsible government. Uh, should responsible government be so dependent on secrecy? Well, I think one thing that's going to happen, I don't, I don't agree with, it, the Secretary, with Secretary Clinton that it's that uh, significant. It hadn't torn up the fabric uh, for diplomacy. 
But I think that uh, perhaps in the future there's going to be a lot more caution uh, as uh, leaders send them dispatches into the State Department and as our own ambassadors send reports back into the State Department if they suspect that their words might be uh, revealed in the future. I think they're going to be more careful. Am I detecting a different perspective in former presidents than current presidents on this? <laughs> I, when you think about uh, the Pentagon Papers uh, being leaked, uh, the Nixon administration had a very harsh reaction to it. Now you see the Obama administration having a very harsh reaction to uh, information within their uh, uh, administration being leaked. Uh, that when you're president and something is leaked, especially massive leaks, like this or the Pentagon Papers, that yeah. there is a very defensive and harsh reaction out of a White House that, that apparently when you've been out of the White House for a while, you can get a different perspective on. Well, I don't have any doubt that I look on it with more equanimity than past President <laughs> Obama, who's uh, suffering from the consequences. But also, maybe after you've been out of office for 25 years or so, you look at it with a little bit more objectivity than if you're right in the heat of, uh, of the diplomatic or policy making uh, battles. So I understand how he feels and I noticed that the statement from the press secretary uh, attributed a very serious con possible consequences to these leaks. I, I wish they weren't happening this voluminously, but I don't think there's any doubt that they do reveal facts that the public would never have known. And I think the long-term uh, damage will be much more minimal than is presently ascribed by the, maybe the White House spokesperson. It seems that the leak story uh, is a revelation of the difference between the public face of government and government officials and the private face of government and government officials and how they communicate privately. Might there be some of that in the reaction we're seeing out of the Obama administration, this very harsh reaction, may be an overstatement to the way they actually feel about it, an overstatement they feel they have to make uh, to impress Saudi Arabia and other countries that have been exposed in this in this leak dump. I don't have any doubt that both of those factors are involved. For instance, I had an, an ambassador in Iran during the hostage crisis uh, who, with whom I didn't get along at all, and he was almost um, rebellious against some of the decisions I made, and I would have been very uh, deeply disturbed if they, had, if they had printed in the New York Times or on MSNBC, if it existed then, of what we were actually saying to each other as a president and a, and a representative of mine who was an ambassador. So I think that, uh, that this, both of those sides are true. They want to uh, make sure that uh, people that read them were looked on with some degree of skepticism, that these are not final decisions, but just un, 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 unedited uh, discussions. And secondly, to reassure our allies that you can still send honest and frank uh, messages to us and we'll try in the future not to let them be revealed. Uh, our, one of our major allies that, is, uh, that has some exposure in these documents is Israel. Uh, you have a complicated history in terms of your own uh, per the perception of your own relations uh, to the questions involving Israeli security and so forth. And in your book, yeah. you indicate that you feel misunderstood by Jewish voters. You feel misunderstood in many ways by Israelis on, uh, on the Carter view of uh, Israeli security and, is, and Israel's future. What do you think is the source of that misunderstanding, and what, do you, what clarifications do you wish you could achieve? Well, Lawrence, if, if I had to identify the number one issue in foreign policy that's affected my life for the last 30 years in my private uh, efforts and also in my prayers to God, it would be the uh, peace and security for Israel and peace and security for Israel's neighbors. But when you try to get both of them simultaneously, which I think is necessary, uh, then there are some people that have unilateral support of Israel and don't want to see the other side to the issues. But what I saw when I came into the White House was four wars in 25 years, all led by Egypt, who was the only, which was the only Arab country that could challenge Israel. And I did bring peace, permanent peace, between Israel and Egypt, not a word of which has been violated since we negotiated the treaty. The other aspect of it, though, and that is to get Israel to withdraw from occupied territories, and to let Palestinians have a, have a nation alongside Israel, hopefully living in peace. That part has not been accomplished, and that's one of the, my prayers that still exists, and that will happen in the future. Mr. President, I'd like to get a word with you before you go on what we just witnessed in the midterm congressional elections. Uh, there's a debate going on on this network.
network and elsewhere that the Democrats lost because they were too liberal. Uh, some saying, no, the Democrats lost because they weren't liberal enough. They should have stuck uh, with certain issues and fought harder for them. Uh, what is your analysis of what uh, the Democrats and President Obama just suffered in this last midterm election? Well, they suffered from uh, 18 months or so of total irresponsibility on, on the side of the Republicans who resolved that they wouldn't support uh, President Obama on anything he tried that had any significance to it. And sometimes, as you know, on a major issue, he wouldn't even get one vote in the House or Senate. So that's, uh, I think, uh, a total absence of responsibility on a major political party in our country. And uh, I believe that will be changed after this election, because now at least they'll have to be responsible for what happens in the House of Representatives. And they'll have to explain their uh, position to the American public, which they've avoided so far. On the other hand, I think that President Obama now has realized that he's not going to get much support from the Republicans, and he'll be much more forceful, perhaps, in sticking to the promises and commitments he made during the campaign on major issues. And I believe that that's what he did with the reconciliation decision that he made after he lost the votes uh, in the Senate and he finally got a bill passed uh, that has some compromises in it, but is a major step forward in health care. So I think that Republicans will be more responsible in the future in the next uh, two years. I think President Obama will, will be much more resolved and determined to plow ahead, even though it doesn't please the Republicans enough to get any of their votes. President Jimmy Carter, author of White House Diary, thank you for your time tonight. It's an honor to have you join us here in the show. I've enjoyed it, Lawrence. Thank you very much.